today we're going to be updating my rise of kingdoms legendary commander tier list because apparently i haven't updated this in like almost a year like 10 months or something and we have had some insane commanders come in the game over the last 10 months so today i'm going to be going over the very best legendary commanders in rise of kingdoms but first what's going on guys cheers quick reminder about 69 percent of you guys are not subscribed to the channel so go ahead and click that button down below and drop a thumbs up on the video and also today's video is sponsored by a website that i spend more money on than I'd like to admit to Amazon and the Amazon App Store. The Amazon App Store is the best place to download and play your favorite games because of their own digital currency known as Amazon coins. For example, right now the Amazon App Store is running a massive promotion with Ebony the King's Return. You can get up to 25% back on all in-game purchases in the form of Amazon coins and you can then use these coins to redeem for more in-game purchases. But it doesn't end there because you can actually get a discount on buying Amazon coins as well. If you use my link down below, you can save between five and 10% on Amazon coins themselves. So for example, 50,000 Amazon coins is usually $500, but right now it's only 450. 10,000 coins is normally hundred dollars, but right now it's 92. So not only can you get an upfront discount on purchases you might normally already be making, but then you get the cash back in the form of Amazon coins as well. It's literally a win-win. So I don't see any reason not to give it a try, especially because downloading the Amazon app store is free with a link down below or by scanning the QR code on the screen and of course using my link helps out the channel a ton and this offer is available to anybody using an android device in the united states the uk so give the amazon app store and ebony the king's return a try today and i want to thank the amazon app store once again for sponsoring today's video okay with all of that out of the way let's jump right into the tier maker and back when i made my tier list video for rise of kingdoms i ranked literally every commander in the game and if you guys missed that and you're curious about maybe some of the older commanders you can definitely check out that video and one day soon I will make a new updated version of that video but today we're just going to be going over the changes since last time and what you're looking at here on the screen I guess it's this way is completely out of date this is this is the old tier list now it's important to remember that when I built this tier list this was focusing on open field PVP capability. We're not talking about the rally meta, the garrison meta, anything like that. This is strictly for open field PVP. And the first thing that I wanted to do was bump down some commanders that I think have sort of fallen off a little bit since the last time I made this tier list video. And you'll notice that I've brought by bars down into the F tier, kind of where he belongs here. And I've moved some of the older garrison and rally commanders into the C tier here, where like nobody's really using these anymore in the open field. But like, I guess you could consider them better than like some of the stuff down here I've also moved down some commanders from the a tier for example Tamiris has moved down a little bit because her poison stacks are no longer unique anymore we've also moved down commanders like Harold Gilgamesh and Chandra Gupta I mean honestly he could be even lower I'll leave them in B tier for the cavalry mains and of course a bunch of the S tier moved down as well we have moved down Trajan Nebu Artemisia Zhang Yu Sargon truthfully Sargon probably can go down to B I think Honda was in a S tier that went down of course and he probably could go down even farther as well and then from the S plus tier we have moved down Utica Prime she is not an S plus commander and that's not to say that she's not useful but she's just not in the top tier of commanders in the game now on the bottom here you can see all of the commanders that are new to the game since I made this tier list and we're going to be adding them to the tier list now but I want to remind you guys that if you're watching this video as a free to play or a low spender then you probably should only be investing in the S plus tier okay and there are going to be new commanders that I put in that tier throughout this video just a little bit of spoiler the S tier is kind of like if you are a medium or high spender and you want to start to branch out into multiple armies of multiple troop types then some of these older commanders are things that you could consider investing in right now if you're kind of just waiting around for the next cycle and then the A tier is kind of like niche uses like there's maybe one or two commander pairs that you could make use out of these commanders for sure then b and below is like b is like you're you're running some old stuff here like i don't know what you're doing if you're running b these might be some free to play options as well or some niche things like mulan and then c tier and d tier really shouldn't be used in the open fields at all and then f tier of course are mostly like garrison like older garrison older rally commanders like things that you're never really going to use right so that's kind of how i'm breaking down this tier list now the first commander we have to go over is pyrus pyrus of course came into the game with the greece introduction 
production last summer and he also brought with him Pericles who I actually don't have on this tier list that's how pointless he is Pericles you could assume just goes in the in the F tier okay he's an epic commander I know that this is not an accurate uh, icon for him but Pericles is F okay don't even think about that but Pyrus himself is actually not bad especially as a gold key commander I kind of see him on the same level as Thutmose so he's gonna go in the B tier he definitely outputs more damage as an infantry commander than some of the other early game infantry commanders that you have access to such as Richard and even such as Martel now he isn't as tanky as those commanders but he is putting out more damage and also in the late game there is a commander pair that you can use with him that makes him somewhat viable I'm sure you already know what it is but I think Pyrus is a solid B tier commander for example I'd rather use him than many of the commanders here in the C tier and also I'd rather use him over many of the commanders here in the B tier as well now I'm not saying he's the best B tier commander but I'm going to put him over here on the left hand side because it'll just be easier for you guys to keep track throughout this video now moving on to Gorgo initially I kind of wrote Gorgo off as not a commander that you would use in the open field because she has no March speed and she has one of her skills is completely reliant on on being in a garrison however since that initial impression I was completely wrong she is an S tier commander in the open field running Gorgo with Liu Che which is right here we'll talk about him in a moment that is an excellent commander pairing in the open field right now it is insane yes it is on the slow side but the truth is that it just performs really well the smite damage and normal damage is insane on that commander pairing and so you can absolutely use Gorgo in the open field now Tarek um because of that I honestly I probably should bring Tark down to the A tier I think realistically it just makes the most sense and while we're at it let's bring Henry down here as well I think that just it it is what it is I mean let's be real you guys will understand a little bit more as we go throughout this video but Gorgo definitely an S tier open field commander in my opinion Liu Che star of the show my opinion best commander in the game straight up right now I think Liu Che is the best commander of the game and it's kind of it's almost not even close like the amount of commanders that you could pair with Liu Che is actually insane the fact that Liu Che in my current KBK Liu Che with Alex is probably my best performing March like it's actually insane the trades are unbelievable the March speed with this pairing is insane the AOE damage on Liu Che is insane the slowdown is super helpful his expertise is a better built-in Horn of Fury I made a whole video about that and it's just I think he's the best commander of the game right now um you could pair him with so many different commanders and they will perform well he's missing a super meaningful debuff so that's kind of where like Julia Leon kind of performs better there CPO Prime performs better there we have a nice debuff on the active skill from Nevsky for example so really no insane debuff on Liu Che but the damage meters are through the roof with him no matter pretty much who you pair him with honestly so yeah Liu Che best commander right now in my opinion in the entire game moving on to Huo I think Huo is also an S plus commander now right now I'm gonna be honest with you guys in my KVK my calf marches are performing worse in my current KVK than they've performed in a very long time and I think the reason for that is probably I'm gonna be honest probably Liu Che we're seeing a ton of Liu Che in the open field right now whether it's with CPO whether it's with Alexander the Great whether it's with Gorgo like there's so many Liu Che's right now in the open field that I think that might explain why my cavalry are performing really poorly and also I've talked to a lot of my alliance and they all are kind of feeling very similar not everyone but a lot of players are saying like they're Nevsky isn't performing as well as it did one or two kvks ago a lot of players have actually switched the Joan to the huo in an attempt to solve that issue because it does seem to be pretty common amongst a, a lot of players in my current kvk so if you were feeling that way as well you're not crazy it seems again it just seems like my cavalry are performing a little bit worse right now and i think that is because of Liu Che. nonetheless i do still think that huo is one of the best open field cavalry commanders in the game right now i think he is on par with nevsky i'm not ready to say that he's better than nevsky i know a lot of players are starting to change their opinion on Huo Nevsky I think some players are starting to see that the extra damage output from Huo is nice even though you are losing that defense reduction on the active skill on Nevsky so no matter who you think is better right now I think these two are very neck and neck in terms of open field performance and then we move on to Justinian I think Justinian is also probably an S tier if not an A tier open field commander I mean he's just raw damage he's just a stat stick he's a beat stick he's a vanilla commander in the open field that just deals damage he shines in rallies but in the open field like his damage is just so good that you could use him if you wanted to this is not a commander that I would really recommend investing in unless you are a rally player anyway but players are using him in the open field and he's doing all right it's not something that I invested in but you you definitely could try it moving on to Ashurbanipal this is also in my opinion an S tier commander he definitely kind of takes the place 
of the Henry or of the Nebu in the open field. So if you're running more than one Archer March, you're probably going to have Asher Bonifal in there somewhere just because his damage output is kind of nuts. His active skill, the AOE, he's got 15% March speed when you're outside of your territory as well, which is nice. I feel like right now we are still feeling like the archers are kind of slow, right? So you're going to probably see Asher Bonifal in the open field. I think he's probably better than uh, Justinian for sure, strictly because of the, the AOE. He's just doing more, especially if he's expertise, right? Moving on to Herman Prime, he's definitely an S plus commander I do think that he's not hitting as hard as the Zhuge Liang he's not hitting as hard as the Liu Che right and I just feel like he's definitely still the best pairing for Zhuge Liang in my opinion and the value that he brings with the poison stacks is kind of unmatched right like like the fact that you get a solid AoE commander with one of the best debuffs in the game definitely an S plus tier commander I would say he probably belongs like here if i were to be completely honest with you guys like maybe you could put them above cpo but like it's just hard to quantify those poison stacks now the other benefit of herman prime is a lot of people that i talk to who don't have him expertise and they have him at 5551 they're saying that he's still performing really well right and that's over the 5551 boudicca prime from last year so i do think that uh, this is an s plus commander and it is nice that it seems like it's not a commander that you have to max whereas if you look at commanders like liu Che, you gotta max him you look at commanders like cpo prime you really should max him like there's a lot to love in every single stat point that you add to him so that that is that now that's gonna kind of wrap up the s plus uh ranking i know that's gonna be kind of shocking to you guys because we still have three more commanders here but maybe if you've been paying attention maybe that's not so shocking so Gajamata and Cordoba we're just gonna drop them in B uh that's where we have the other ranged commanders here and it's because this is such a, a niche thing right ranged even you know I've seen maybe one or two ranged players all KVK the truth is they're trading fine right but you have to go so far out of your way to make it happen you have to build equipment sense for them you have to get the right armaments for those commanders and when that's all said and done you still have a pairing here that you cannot hit a flag or fort with right like that is just such a a red flag to me it's like you can't hit a flag or fort with this it's a niche thing if you like it then you like it and if that's your play style great if you find that these commanders are valuable to you great but to me it's just so niche that they really uh, they're not good enough to move out of b tier in my opinion and then of course we have lapu lapu who is a city garrison commander now he does have a really powerful five target circular aoe but he's basically this year's Heraclius who also lands in B tier. I think he's less tanky than Heraclius, but he deals more damage than Heraclius. So it kind of, you know, it basically is what it is. It lands in the B tier in my opinion. So with that being said, the S plus tier is more stacked now than ever. We have seven commanders in the S plus category, and it makes me feel like one of these commanders needs to go. Maybe two commanders need to go. But the truth is like these all are the best commanders in the game now again i think the stars of the show right now from my gut feeling this is anecdotal are the first four right these are the these are in my opinion are the best commanders in the game right now but i also just don't feel like it would be fair to move any of these calves down they all perform still really well in the open field so that's where i'm gonna leave it this is my current commander tier list for rise of kingdoms if you're wondering what my head was covering here that's it okay so now i'm gonna end this video with one last little shout out to alexander the great i feel like alexander the great i put him here at the top of the a tier for a reason i feel like he is the best commander in this category it's actually insane how good he is with liu che it exceeded my expectations so much so that i almost regret even getting gorgo because it's actually just that good it is incredible the instant proc damage that you get from alex's second skill plus the rage engine on the expertise of liu che means you're going to be popping the active skill on alex more often as well on top of that you can't have your damage decreased with your liu che because the second skill on alexander the great prevents him from taking an all damage dealt reduction which you do see on Liu Che and Zhuge Liang so yeah another just quick honorable mention Alex is absolutely outperforming my expectations especially because he also has a relic which gives your Liu Che 10 percent more infantry defense so yeah this pairing right now is the MVP for me and my current KVK it is the star of the show it is incredible and the fact that part of it is a KVK 2 commander just blows my mind and that actually makes me really happy for the players that have had Alex in the past they have a good use for him and also for new players who maybe got Alex not realizing that historically he didn't age super well into season of conquest but 
right now he does so that's great anyway guys if you made it all the way to the end of the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and one more quick shout out to today's sponsor the amazon app store check it out with the link in the description it helps out my channel a ton and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace